Hello Unity fans, in today's video we will create random idle workers or citizens procedurally by selecting their characteristics from a defined list of options. We will also assign these idle meeples to buildings when they get constructed. Once assigned, the newly assigned worker will head to its new home, gather its new tools and go about its business as it did in previous videos. In a previous video, I developed a tool for creating random meeples by manually cycling through its characteristics and tools and then saving the final configuration. Some of the textures that came with the asset pack were a bit wild and each color option was also created as a separate prefab object, although all the different color options used the same model mesh. In order to have some more variety in reasonable color options, while also limiting the number of required prefabs, I have since redesigned how these units are built up. Let's take the hair as an example. Each different hairstyle needs a separate mesh, which I extracted from the asset. However, instead of creating different prefabs for the different color options, I created the prefabs without textures and created different materials that can be applied to the prefab as needed. If you look at the original textures, you will see that the detail remains the same and only the color changes across options. So using Photoshop, I created a grayscale version of the detail as my base texture. Now we can create different materials based on this base texture by setting the main color of the material, which is applied to the base texture. The beards, hats and tools are built up in the same way. Let's see how we apply all of this when a random unit is created. Firstly, we need to tell our meeple generator which prefabs and materials it has at its disposal. We add these to the prefab linker script we've used before. We link all the different components that can be used to build up a unit, but I'm just showing the hair prefabs and materials for this example. We start off by instantiating a base or body. You'll notice that we can specify the random seed we'd like to use to create the unit, and we store this as part of the unit's detail. This will become important later on when we get to saving and loading. Instead of saving all the random options selected for the unit, we will only save the seed. So when we eventually load the unit, we will just recreate it using the same seed. So we can get the same characteristics without having to save the individual components. Next, we set the body size randomly and then save references to the important slots on the body where all the options should be applied, namely the head, hand, pelvis and the bone to which the basket should be fixed. Now we randomly pick one of the beard models with a random color or material. I do this in a reusable method that can be used for all the different elements to be selected. Note that we can specify a probability of not adding any of the options, which also allows units without beards, hair or hats. We could also specify one of the options explicitly through the select prefab parameter, in which case a random one would not be picked. But if we pass a value less than zero, the method picks a random prefab or material. We assign the material in the same way and apply it to the mesh of the prefab which could actually be located on one of the children objects, so we cater for both eventualities. Before we move on to the hair, we may not want a unit with black hair and a red beard. If we want to match the beard and hair color, we add the prefix ref to the material index parameter in the method heading, which allows us to send the choice of material back to the create random meeple method. When we now request a random hair model, we specify the beard's material index rather than minus one to enforce that option. Adding a hat leaves us with a random unit without any tools, an unassigned basic unit who does not yet know what job he'll eventually be required to do. Of course, our method needs to know which unit type it's creating in order to provide him with the correct tools and in order for him to know which actions to perform. We do this in another method which follows the same pattern we've just discussed. Just to be safe, we destroy any previous tools the unit may have been given. 
Then, for the different unit types, we add the required tools to the hand and pelvis slots. You will notice that the woodcutter actually gets two tools in each slot. This allows us to easily switch between axe and saw depending on his current action, rather than having to constantly reassign and reposition tools. When the unit type has been assigned, there are some of the variables in the unit script that need to be reset or initialized, for example the unit's speed and resource type. We also instantiate the appropriate resource prefabs that will be displayed inside the carrying basket. Finally, we activate and deactivate the tools according to what we want visible at the onset. In our case, the tools and carrying basket will be disabled, since we want the unit to first travel to his new home and fetch these. The way in which we add units to the map also needs to change now. In the past, we created a woodcutter unit whenever we built a woodcutter's cabin. However, we actually want to allow idle citizens in our town first and then select one of them as the woodcutter whenever the cabin is built. So, when we build the dwellings, we also create a bunch of random idle units who stay there. They've all been set up to just randomly roam the map for now. As soon as the woodcutter's cabin is built, one of the idle citizens is then assigned to it by changing its type and also linking the cabin to the unit behind the scenes in the parameters and variables. The unit is ordered to walk to the cabin, fetch his tools and start chopping wood. Eventually the plan is for units to gradually join your town as idle citizens as you build up capacity, so units won't just suddenly appear as buildings are constructed. But the process would follow a more realistic approach. It is much more satisfying seeing a citizen join your town then be assigned a job as opposed to him appearing out of thin air when constructing a building like before. This process also works for the stonemason and farmer. Once the unit type and building has been assigned to the unit, he continues harvesting as before. In the next video, we'll allow visiting units into our town and formally link these up with our town's capacity mechanics, so that our population can increase properly over time allowing us to construct more buildings as we obtain more citizens. Please consider subscribing to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.